Hello RV lovers, thought I'd give you guys a quick update on what's happening with Ella the Excella's electrical system. We made uh, quite a few updates since uh, last time we talked about it. It's uh, slowly evolving. We've got more components to be added and lots of things to be expanded and improved, but we, uh, we needed to get it on the road. So we got some very basic functionality up and running and I thought I'd watch you, walk you through where we're at today and show you uh, how it's working together with our Ford F-150 and its generator options uh, together with our Victron Energy inverter charger and a couple of Battleborn batteries that are kind of getting us on down the road until we can uh, continue to improve it. So let me walk you through it. All right, folks. So as I said, Ella is a work in progress. As you can kind of see, we needed to get her on the road. So we got some basic functionality up and running, including, you know, most of our plumbing working properly, most of our electrical, a few things missing here and there. But uh, I'll walk you through with what we've done so far on the electrical and, and show you what's good, what's bad, and what's ugly. Our electrical system currently consists mostly of these components. We have power coming in through our 30 amp connector going into our MultiPlus 3000 watt inverter and connected to two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries from Battleborn Batteries. This worked pretty well. It's got a couple of issues and we're kind of using components that we sort of cobbled together. We didn't have everything that we needed to make it perfect. So we made it safe and we made it work. And now we're wait waiting on a couple more items to take it to the next level. So right now, this is all connected since uh, we're at home, we don't have a normal 30 amp shore power connection like we would at a campground. It's connected to our Ford F-150 generator. That provides up to 7.2 kilowatts on board and it is bringing power into our MultiPlus. Our uh, MultiPlus is just operating off of its pre-programmed parameters. So this is how I got it from Battleborn. Battleborn sells batteries, but they also sell Victron energy components. So. I purchased all this together as a system from Battleborn, including the Victron Energy components, and they were to have programmed the parameters to essentially make this operate right. You gotta set the right voltages to uh, get into bulk charge, to float, properly charge these batteries to the right level. The batteries also have their own battery management system on board so that if they were to be shorted, for example, they would basically cut out, or if they were to be too cold for operation, for charging in particular, they would cut out. What we tried to do is maintain our current circuit breaker box, which was this. We now have a new higher current supply coming in with much heavier gauge so that power from the inverter using the uh, boost function from the multi plus is using properly gauged cable because it's going to be a higher current. This could be up to 55 amps coming from the multi plus 3000 watt. So what we did was we upgraded this box here. This box here used to be just a single gang hexagonal box and it had our short power coming in that's this cable here this comes straight from the short power connector on the other side of this it's coming in here it's going here out to the multi plus and then back from the multi plus with a higher gauge cable i'll include the details in the description so that we can properly provide power boosts so let's say we wanted to have both our air conditioner and our refrigerator and perhaps one other item functioning we could provide a boost of up to 55 amps rather than the 30 amps that's coming in from the shore power connector. So the way it does that, it takes the energy from the battery, uses the inverter function, merges that with the power that's coming in from the shore and provides for a total of nearly double what you would have from the uh, shore power connector alone. Comes back here, currently we're on a 40 amp breaker, plenty safe. I don't think we'll need more than that. Certainly not for the driveway tests that we've been running. Perhaps when we go out to some warmer climates, we wanna be able to not worry too much about what we're running simultaneously. We wanna be able to run the air conditioner and obviously the refrigerator and some other normal, but not too high current devices like being able to charge our laptops, being able to use televisions. Those are all fairly low current. It'd be interesting to see if we could do those and say, for example, the microwave. We'll have to kind of see. Let's talk about our makeshift battery setup here. So we've got a couple of battery trays. These are new. I can link them in the, uh, in the description below. I don't think that we'll be using them in the long term. While they're very sturdy, they are uh, heavy gauge metal covered in a vinyl coating. They hold these down real well. They have these pull downs for the batteries. They fit the battle boards okay. 
the train is just a little too wide down here and this whole setup here makes it very difficult to put these batteries closer together so i think what we're going to end up doing is using these built-in sort of strap holders molded into the case of the battery and use some uh, simple straps here to individually tie down these batteries we're going to add our additional couple of batteries here right next to these two we're going to try to keep these as close together keep our our four aught gauge cable as short as we can number one it's expensive number two it's very hard to bend into position and uh number three it'll just look a lot cleaner and a lot better if we can get these closer together and tighter so we'll work on that and get rid of uh get rid of these as you can see this negative black cable that was previously on our house batteries is just sort of uh, bolted on here in sort of a makeshift fashion. This is, uh, I believe this is only six gauge or four gauge uh, cable. There's not a lot of current draw going to the DC side. It's mostly just lighting, water pump, a couple other devices on the DC side of the trailer. Uh, we also have a fuse protecting our uh, ent entire DC side of the system so that our DC circuits in the trailer itself do not draw more than the cabling can handle. Our battery holders are kind of cobbled together. Our main disconnect switch is not our final one, sort of cobbled together. And uh, our main battery fuse is not final either. That's also sort of cobbled together. Welcome to the post-pandemic ordering world. When you want some parts, you can't have them. So we're going to wait for the proper things to come in. But in the meantime, like I said, we need to get on the road. So we made it safe and use what we could. So let's see what's currently being used, turn some devices on and off, and see what our current draw is on the system and the devices that we currently have. So let's test that out a bit. The charger has shifted from bulk to absorption, meaning that uh, this way the batteries have time to absorb the energy that the charger is presenting to them and uh, reach a proper state of charge. Um, let's see what the, what the Ford F-150's Pro Power 7.2 kilowatt onboard option says about how much current this is currently drawing. This is the only device that is essentially connected to that. All of the uh, outlets and everything throughout the uh, Airstream are connected to the output of this inverter. So uh, this MultiPlus inverter charger is the only thing that's connected to the truck. Let's see how much it's pulling in order to charge these batteries. As we mentioned in a previous video, the connector that we have purchased to connect our 30 amp service directly to the two legs of our truck pulls from leg B, this leg here, uh, that circuit. So circuit B is showing less than 200 watts, just as circuit A is. Nothing is connected to circuit A. So the Ford F-150 Pro Power onboard option essentially defaults to this minus or less than 200 watts display when it, nothing is essentially drawing from that circuit. So very, very little. So the onboard electronics of the inverter are really all that's it's drawing some power so we're looking at less than a couple hundred watts a little earlier when the multi plus was in bulk charge mode it was pulling about 1500 watts okay so about uh, 12 amps or so it's now pulling nearly nothing letting those batteries kind of come up slowly charging them up all right so that's uh with only the inverter powered up and in absorption mode for the charger on uh, two batteries. Let's uh, let's flip on some other devices like the air conditioner and see what happens to our current usage. It's going to go way up. Our duo therm penguin air conditioner we just flipped into low cool mode and uh, it's kicked on. You can tell that the uh, air conditioning is starting to work. It's uh, on some cool air so Let's see what's happened to our power usage. We've gone up to 1500 watts. That is what, uh, what the air conditioner draws when it's in low cool mode. That, uh, that matches up pretty well with what we noticed in our previous video. That's good because that means with the inverter charger in place and the batteries relatively well charged up, the draw is the same as the inverter. A little bit of losses uh, through the inverter itself, but not much. So let's bump it up to medium, see what it does, 
we bump it up to high and then we'll leave it there for a while. We need to cool the Airstream down so we can do some work inside. It is uh, over 90 degrees and sunny today, so plenty of heat, plenty of load for that air conditioner. All right, we've gone from using about 1500 watts to using uh, 1700, 1800 watts. So we've gone from about 12 and a half amp draw to about a 14, a little over 14 amp draw by just having our air conditioner on and that's compared low, low mode compared to medium, uh, 12 and a half amps, 14 amps. So I'm going to kick it up to high, see what it does there and then keep adding some more loads. Hmm, that's interesting. We increased the air conditioner from medium to high cool mode and we're still at about 1800 watts. 1800 watts is about 15 amps at 120 volts. Uh, there we go, a little bit higher here and there. It's about 15 amps. Not much additional uh, additional load there, not much additional draw. Let's kick the refrigerator on and see what, uh, what it does. The Multi Plus is still in absorption mode. Hmm, the inverter should be on. I guess maybe that means it's just not drawing anything from the batteries in order to pass it on to through the uh, through the multi plus. It's essentially outputting what it's receiving from the truck and uh, not really providing much charge right now to these guys because they seem to be pretty well topped up. Let's see what happens when we kick on the refrigerator and see if this does start to provide any boost. Set to call list. Put it on auto. Automatically kicked into AC. So it's using AC power, not gas. And that's going to start drawing as well. No change in the display here. We're going to have to uh, get connected to this thing and see what it tells us. Almost 90 degrees in the freezer, so I'd say that's a pretty hot start. All right, our power usage has jumped up a bit to 2100 watts, 2200 watts, here. so 17 and a half, 18 amps. That's with the air conditioner fully powered on high and the refrigerator just started. The draw from the inverter charger, very low, Victron Multi Plus, because those batteries are already charged up. The Ford Pass app also gives us a view from inside the trailer, for example, where we're at right now, of what is happening with the Pro Power option. As we can see, it's drawing 2100 watts, just like we saw earlier from inside on the display. Now we should find out what happens if those batteries can keep up with this kind of a load if we turned off the generator. Let's find out. This is what happens when you get the system to draw at the max. So we're drawing a full 30 amps into our inverter charger because now we have all those loads still on. The air conditioner, the refrigerator, all on full blast. And the inverter is in charge mode. So the inverter charger, the Multi Plus, is in charge mode, filling up those batteries. It just slipped on down to absorption so the charger is turned off immediately we can see that it is going down on its maximum power draw at 3600 watts it drew right up to the 30 amp limit because it knows that it's connected to a 30 amp supply so it drew right up to the top of it for a little while when the loads really peaked on the ac side it even drew from the batteries to keep those on and at one point, the truck said, whoa, too much load. Oh, well, exceeded 30 amps. So it treated that as a short and it tripped its own internal breaker. That's when the Multi Plus started to draw from its batteries. And now it is kind of normalized. The load has come, come down a bit. The charger is not drawing an additional 14, 1500 watts. All is back to normal. So there you have it. Maximum draw at 30 amps, 3,600 watts. The truck didn't like it, complained, but as long as it kind of 
peaked at that point and didn't just come on at a full 30 amps. It, uh, it, let, that, it let that pass. So some tweaking to be done on this system, obviously. We've got some batteries to add. We've got some programming to do on the Multi Plus, but still pretty functional. And uh, interesting to see how much each device will draw under worst case scenario circumstances.